The gluteal tendinopathy is quite a common cause of lateral hip pain that we most often see in middle-aged women. So a lot of people probably know it by the term trochanteric bursitis. So, but we now understand that it involves the gluteal tendons rather than the bursa. So it's pain at the lateral aspect of the hip that's most provocative during walking or sleeping on the affected side. So it's strange. So despite it being quite a common condition, there's little understanding of the physical impairments associated uh, with the condition. And as physios, we need to understand uh, what the people look like and the problems that they might have in order to design our treatments. So essentially, we know that walking is provocative for these people. So we wanted to look at how were they walking and to see essentially if that's something that should be targeted with physiotherapy. So our, our primary question was, we wanted to measure, we, in the movement laboratory, we can measure a surrogate indicator of load of hip abductor tendon. So we wanted to get an understanding of that during walking. And then we wanted to know about the joint angles or the walking patterns that people with gluteal tendinopathy used. So this study was part of a much larger study. So it took a long time to recruit the participants, probably about just over two years. So it was a long process. And each participant came in for about an hour and we performed a, a walking analysis in the lab and we took some other measures, strength and th other things we were interested in. And then once we had that data, you'd think it was a simple process, but it's actually quite a long process of processing the data, analysing it. So on average, each participant, a good few hours uh, to look at the data for each participant. Probably recruitment. So with um, studies like this, you can imagine lots of things can affect walking, you know, age, balance, other diseases. And so we needed to get people with, that had gluteal tendinopathy that had no other injuries or hadn't had any other injuries that would affect walking. So it was quite a strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. So it took quite a long time. Good question. So that's, this has been shown time and time again that people with tendinopathy are larger, they have more body fat. And unfortunately, one of the things about tendinopathy is it's responsive to some of the uh, chemical mediators in our blood that come from fat cells. So the larger you are, the more body fat you have, you're typically more at risk of, um, of tendinopathy anywhere in the body. But in this case, it was gluteal tendinopathy. So I guess the big finding that we found was that people with gluteal tendinopathy during walking, the loads on their gluteal tendons were much larger than those um, in controls. So 33% greater, which is we think is huge, like clinic, quite clinically significant. And the thing that explained the, the increased loads was the fact that these people had pelvic drops, so they had sort of a sashaying hip pattern during walking. And when we looked at the gluteal tendinopathy people overall, they definitely had different walking patterns from the controls, um, except within those gluteal tendinopathy group, we had a group that had quite a dropping hip pattern, and then we had another group that had high trunk lean, so sort of a trunk sway. So you can imagine that if you have these two different groups, uh, you would have to treat them quite differently with physiotherapy exercise intervention. Good question. Essentially, yes, so gluteal tendinopathy is quite chronic. So some people have it for two years to seven years. So you can imagine those people in the early stage of the disease probably have quite a different pattern to seven years later when you've had to walk around with hip pain for a long period of time. So we've seen in other hip conditions like hip osteoarthritis that people have a different walking pattern depending on the severity or, or the duration of the disease. So it was slightly expected that we might see something like this in our gluteal tendinopathy group. Uh, well, essentially, this is the, the first data that shows us that um, people with gluteal tendinopathy do have a different walking pattern, and that's potentially something we should be targeting with physiotherapy. But specifically, you know, it's not a homogeneous group. So there's some people that use different strategies. So it's recognising in physiotherapy that we do in a lot of conditions that people can have the same disease but present differently. So there's no... Um, tends to be not one fits all approach to treatment. So um, in this scenario, we'd be treating um, you know, core control or hip abductor control in these sort of these two subgroups. Um, the other thing would, that is quite pertinent was that pelvic drop, contralateral pelvic drop was the, the biggest predictor 
of the magnitude of the external hip adduction moment. So we measure that in a lab and physios can't measure that in clinic. But what we saw is that the more pelvic drop you had, that was very, very strongly correlated with the magnitude of the moment. So that suggests that we should be addressing frontal plane pelvic control in our rehab. So the next step, what we'll probably look at is whether physiotherapy can change any of these walking patterns and if we can, whether that makes these people any better. So the next step is to look at longitudinal studies so over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm.